So in Palo Verde, the region is very water limited. So a lot of the conservation needs focus on and around water. The types of conservation are typically looking into means of helping to preserve the Tempisque River Basin. They also are very involved in helping to prevent the spread of forest fires. One of the big threats to Palo Verde are actually brought forward by people who are upset when they get caught poaching on the property. As an act of revenge, sometimes they'll set fire to the forest and our rangers have to go out and stop those fires in that case. We also have risks of fire from lightning strikes. And our third threat is the sugarcane fields that are cropping up all along and around the boundary of the park. Such a fire there would be devastating because the trees are very slow growing. And oftentimes harvesting for sugarcane is during peak dry season, so that's a huge risk. Other areas of conservation have included some of the organisms that are found there, in particular the American crocodile. At one point in time, the American crocodile was almost hunted to a very dangerous level. Their populations were very, very low. The Costa Rican government then put in place different rules and regulations that prevented the hunting of the crocodiles for their meat and for their skin. And they've since really bounced back. So they're actually a success story. The conservation push for this place is first the integrity of a natural area. We bought this forest many years ago, almost 60 years ago, when it was fairly undisturbed and very intact. And our challenge is to keep it working like that. It's understanding the integrity of that ecological setting and understand what are the pressures on it. Is there human pressures from agriculture, from poachers, or from climate? So we can prepare for what is coming, which is a change in our environment. I mean, the change is already here. Climate change is happening. We have the data here to prove it, okay? There's no doubt in our minds that it's changing. So two things we need about this forest for its conservation. First, know what we got. We need to continue the inventories, get further than 18% of the species that we know about. We need to know it in depth. The second thing is we need to manage it. It's not going to save itself. It's not going to manage itself. We have to be actively managing. That's key to conservation. You have to do certain things. Remove invasive species, control poaching, control pollution. Those things are part of the management. And the third thing that we need to do for effective conservation is celebrate it, help people understand it, help people add value to it. So it has value to their lives, not just as a job because you work in the park, but because just to think about La Selva makes you happy because there's so much stuff in there. The remembering the adventures you have at La Selva when you came, those things enrich people's lives. So if this forest doesn't become part of the everyday life of people, whether it's by memories, experiences, jobs, or study, then its conservation is not going to be effective. Eventually it will be replaced by something else of more value to those people. We know so little about this forest that I can tell you with no hesitation and no doubt that there are cures for diseases out there that we still don't know that there are compounds that are made by plants or by animals that haven't discovered yet and that have the potential to become the next generation of medicines. We don't know them because we have not invested enough in studying what's in here. Like I mentioned, we only know 18% of the biodiversity of this country. Last year, a team of scientists discovered a new fungicide that has the potential to revolutionize the way that we treat certain fungi that attack humans. That's what this forest is. This is the pharmacy of the future. The materials are gonna come from things from here, new materials. We can get them from the venom of spiders, from the silk of the spiders, the venom of snakes. Uh, things that we consider to be poisons become medicines. There is endless amount of those things to discover here. I know for a fact that there are cures for cancer still hidden in this forest. So when I see a forest like this being cut down to plant pineapple, it's the worst thing that humanity can do is to take the library that you still haven't studied and destroy it for something that is very ephemeral.
As a marine biologist, I've seen many of the effects that human activities can have on the ocean. You have unsustainable, eco well, eco, no, but tourism. If you think of Caño Island, for example, they had to reduce drastically the visitation because everybody would go there. First of all, no vests, so they would be free diving. And once they get down there, they don't know how to remain for a long time. So they hold on to the corals and break them and come up eventually with pieces of coral or collect life organisms from the bottom. Also, the anchors from the boats would go straight into the coral heads and destroy them. Nature could go on and on and on without humanity, but the other way around doesn't happen. Humankind needs a good environment to live, and if you don't take care of the resources, then you'll have to stop your endeavors and your activities because then they're not sustainable. So the idea is to make things last as long as you can and take care of everything and make sure that your kids and your kids' kids get to enjoy certain animals or certain plants that maybe they're not useful, quote unquote, because they don't have commercial value, but they have very important meaning. There's more than being productive in terms of economic revenue that you get you also get something important from just being in nature. If you look at the map of the national parks of Costa Rica, most of them are little islands on top of mountains. The landscape in general has a patchwork of little fragments of forest. Much of the biodiversity in this forest require large extensions. The impact is felt harder on a small fragment than it is on a large fragment. That's the problem with fragmentation, that when you make the pieces smaller, then they are able to sustain less and less biodiversity. You lose species along the way. You can soften that landscape between the protected fragments and connect them with corridors. The most natural corridor that exists is a river. The edges of the river are protected by law. If we can reforest those, they become the natural connectors, the corridors that connect those fragments. And if you are able to connect them all, then you are increasing the possibility for these ecosystems to sustain themselves. Regardless of what path your career takes, when you are a student and you're going to be a biologist or you're going to be a journalist or whatever, there will always be space to work in conservation. It could be as small as donate a little bit of money, donate some of your time, Go visit a place, like take a course that comes and brings you to the rainforest so you learn and gain appreciation about it. Always save some time for conservation because it is like an insurance that our quality of life is not going to continue to degrade, that we actually have a future for next generations. And for the decision makers out there, I find it unacceptable that a person in a position of power in government is ignorant about the needs for their society and their connection with the natural areas. If you are going to be a leader of a country, of a state, of an organization, you need to know what's at stake. To ignore the knowledge that science provides and call it, I don't believe in that, there's nothing to believe, it's what it is. Science is the base of our knowledge, it's the generator of knowledge. And if you decide to ignore what science has said or to dismiss them because they're not saying what you would like, then you are committing a crime, a crime against humanity, a crime against your own citizens. Get informed. Information is what you need to make rational, better decisions. And that information, most of it is gonna come from science. So learn to respect and to appreciate the value of science, it will make you a better leader.